Martine, I'll be the one you're meeting with today. Hi, Martine. My name is Basel. I'm your interpreter. Okay, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's very nice to to start off explaining a little bit about who we are and what we do here. Um, I know we spoke on the phone the other day, but I thought we'd just sort of talk about us first. So, um, people come to us sometimes um, right away, and sometimes these things have happened many years ago. Um, nobody has to talk to the police just because they're coming to see us, but if someone would like to, we'll help them to know what their options are, and we can help them through that process. I do want to just say, you know, hello to your interpreter. I know we met in the lobby when you first came in. Um, you guys have a relationship already. You've met each other previous to this, so I'm glad that you're comfortable. It's important that you're comfortable when you're here. Um, these are not necessarily easy conversations that we're having, although I hope that they're not um, going to be terribly hard conversations either. Um, so we here at Crime Victim Center, just so you're aware of our services, we see people who have been sexually abused, physically abused, the victim of different kinds of violent crime. Their loved ones are murdered, their house is broken into, they were dumped on the street, really a wide variety of things. So the people who are coming here might have spoken to the police or they may choose not to. People don't have to talk to the police just because they're coming to see us. Now I understand that you have, and we're gonna talk more specifically about your situation in a few minutes. Um, but just so that you know, not everyone here is going through the police. Some people here, the things that have happened are recent, and some people it's been a while. Um, people come to counseling in their own time, and all of that's just fine. Um, so we primarily are a counseling agency, although we do go to court with some people. We also have a 24-hour hotline, so anytime during the day or night, if you were to need to get in touch with someone, if you were in a crisis or there was a, a big issue, there's a counselor that you'd be able to uh, be in touch with. So it wouldn't necessarily be me, but we would have somebody available. Our services are free and they're confidential. Now, confidential is very important. That means that without your written permission, I can't let anyone know that you're coming here. Um, before you leave today, I'm even gonna have you sign a release for your interpreter so that no matter if I need to uh, make a phone call to let you know about something that's coming up, or if we need to schedule or what have you, that I can speak with your interpreter because even though this person's here today, without that written permission, I can't let, let them know the things we're talking about. I can't talk to them about, about you. Um, so those things are, are really important. Um, additional to that, um, our services are free. So we're not going to ask you for your insurance. Um, I'm not gonna be billing you in any way. We're here just to help you out. Now, I am gonna ask for some information, things like the proper spelling of your name, your address, to be sure I have your phone number correct, um, some other details just so that I know that um, I'm, I'm getting your information accurately and that we can help you with whatever your situation is. But just know that we don't pass that along. Um, we collect that information just so that we have accurate records and information. That's not something that we share with other people. Um, I'm going to be the one you meet with whenever you come in, although there are a few other people, just based on our conversation on the phone, there's some other people who work here who I think are going to be able to help you out. We're going to talk about that more specifically in a few minutes, but just know that generally speaking, it's going to be you and me. Um, when you go to court, it'll be me with you. We'll kind of go from there, all right? I do have a form here that we have everyone sign. It's called our Rights and Responsibilities form. So I just want to kind of go over what that is and give you guys a chance to look at it if you need to kind of read it over. 
you're gonna sign it. When you're done, I'm gonna sign it, saying essentially I watched you sign it, and then you'll get a copy to take home. So our rights responsibilities form goes over our confidentiality. Remember, I can't let anyone know that you're coming here. But there are a couple reasons why I might have to. If you tell me that you're gonna kill yourself or you're gonna kill somebody else, I'm required to tell someone. I can't just allow that to happen. Similarly, if I believe that there is a child who's been abused by anyone, I have to say something about that. So unless you tell me that you're gonna kill yourself or kill someone else or a child is being abused, whatever you say here stays here, okay? This also makes note of the fact that you're in charge of these sessions. It's what you feel you need to work on and not just what I think you need to work on. Um, so you just let me know what direction we need to be taking? What do we need to be talking about? Um, remember, I'm here to help you, so you have to kind of let me know how I can best do that, okay? I'm gonna have you go ahead and um, give this a sign, and then we'll move on, okay? All right, so now that we've got that kind of, those formalities out of the way, um, my understanding from our phone call about the situation, maybe I'll just kind of tell you about it and you can let me know that I've got this correct. So a gentleman broke into your place. This was someone that you did know. Um, and uh, there was some damage to a door, a window, um, as well as some things that he stole. Okay. Um, you had some injury because of that and you went to the hospital and you did report to the police the things that happened. Okay. So in terms of going to the hospital and the injury, because those are things that you had to kind of pay for, I'm gonna have you speak to Aaron here in our office who helps with victim's compensation. Victim's compensation is a fund through the state where if people have been hurt in, an, in a personal injury crime and they have those out-of-pocket medical expenses, the state can actually reimburse you for that or pay you back for some of that. So I'm gonna have you talk to Erin about all the ins and outs. She's gonna help you fill out the paperwork so that they can go ahead and, and try to get you that back. Um, you're here today to find out some information about the Victim Compensation Program, which is through the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency in Harrisburg. As far as um, being a victim of a personal injury crime, and you've gone to the hospital, you may have insurance, but you don't have um, full coverage, and you have some co-pays, um, mm -hmm. out-of-pocket expenses. Um, what I would do is help file that claim for you to the Victim Compensation Program in Harrisburg. They would then review the information, check that your eligibility requirements have been met. Um, very simple as far as that it was reported to the police within 72 hours of the date of the incident. The investigative report shows that um, he didn't instigate the situation, there was no um, crime that preponderance of illegal activity that led up to the incident and um, biggest thing as far as that you're cooperating with the police in the investigation not the fact that there's an uh, actual arrest made because mm -hmm. um, many times there's not an actual perpetrator that's ever caught it's just because you are um, cooperating in that investigation uh, all of those eligibility requirements being met more than likely, then of course they're going to be able to file a claim, an award on your behalf. Um, any payments that are still due to the provider, they would make those per, uh, payments directly to the provider. Anything that you've paid out of pocket, they would make um, that reimbursement directly to you. Mm -hmm. These are not tax dollars or anything like that. They come mainly from defendants paying their costs and fines into the system. I can help as the liaison between you, the providers, the folks in Harrisburg. Um, normally what I do is I file the claim right online to them. I fax them your paperwork. As far as your loss of earnings, if you have to be out of work for a period of time due to your injuries, and you would be able to file for those loss of earnings, um, simply as far as the fact of um, a doctor's excuse verifying the need for you to be out due to those injuries. Um, a few of your last pay stubs to verify what your wages are, your hourly um, normal work week. If you are getting phone calls, you can let me know. I can call 
that provider and ask them again, you know, give them some time. It isn't a fast process, unfortunately. It can take three to six months for the review board to go over the claim and make a decision on an award. From you, I um, would have you sign consent for release of information authorizing you to work on your behalf, complete a couple of the uh, sections of the claim form that pertain specifically to your incident, um, sign the signature page, bring in any copies of your um, itemized statements, anything uh, from the insurance company, it's called the explanation of benefit sheets, um, doctor's excuse, pay stubs. I take photocopies of all of that here. You get all of your originals back. And then as I said, I file the claim online and fax Harrisburg your paperwork. All right. Um, if you do have any questions, you have my card, call me. I know we went over a lot of information today and I'll help you with anything that you've got. I understand that there was some more information about what happened that you didn't choose to share with the police. I need you to understand that's completely fine. Not everyone feels comfortable talking about that right away. From my understanding, in addition to stealing some things and breaking in, he also raped you. Okay. Um, again, totally get why you might not have felt comfortable in that moment to share that with the police. But know that you have options. Even though you didn't say something right away, you can talk to the police and I can help you. I can actually be there with you. We can go down to the uh, police department. We'll talk to a detective. Uh, we'll share with that person the things that happened. Um, I'll be right there in the room with you and you can tell them about the rape and they'll just really add that on to their investigation. They understand, the police understand, that in those moments sometimes it's all very overwhelming and you're not ready to talk about it. So know that that's an option. It's also an option if you don't want to talk to them, that's up to you. You don't have to talk to the police. Um, if this had just happened, this was a few weeks ago, but had this been just a few days ago, um, we would have had the option to go to the hospital to have some evidence collection done. That's not an option anymore for you, but you may still want to talk to your doctor about just your physical health and make sure that you're not injured or if there would be some medications that might help you with some of the other things. Those are still an option to, for you. Um, but as far as going to the police, just because you didn't have that evidence collected doesn't mean you can't talk to the police. You absolutely can. You don't have to even decide today. So if that's next week, the next time we meet, a little bit later, whenever it is that you feel like, okay, that is, a, that is when I want to take that option, that's completely fine. Okay. Um, in the meanwhile, this gentleman was arrested yeah, because you talked about the break-in and the theft, and he's been arrested on those charges. Um, you did have to um, repair or have repaired either the door or the window, the things that had been broken, right? And of course you had those, um, that property damage, but also the theft. So what I'm thinking is we have a woman here named Jamie and she's our restitution advocate. Restitution is what can help you to get money back for that. So restitution is something that a judge orders at the time of sentencing because this guy has been arrested and he's going up for charges. Um, there's some paperwork that Jamie can help you fill out so that the judge has all the information needed to be able to um, have him pay you back for the things that he stole and that you needed to fix. Okay, So I'm going to have Jamie talk to you about the restitution and then we'll talk more about your feelings. Okay. All right, what's going to happen is at the preliminary hearing, a couple things could happen. It can get bound over to criminal court or it can get continued, so be prepared for that, okay? Once it's bound over to criminal court, about six to eight weeks after that, you're going to get paperwork from me. When you get this, I'm going to need you to try to, until you get this, try to get receipts. So if you have a receipt to get your window replaced, um, any medical co-pays, any replacement cost for items that were stolen, if you can get a receipt for that, that would be great. Um, and what you'll need to do is once you get this in the mail, you'll need to fill it out. There's a notification section that's basically just letting us know what you want notified of, it, of in the case. You also want to give us correct information, correct address, phone number, so we know how to get a hold of you. And then you want to fill out this restitution page. And basically all that is 
all that's doing is, is you're just going to put down what your out-of-pocket expenses were so we know what we need to ask for restitution for the case. That's basically anything that you're out-of-pocket because of this crime and the defendant is going to have to pay that back to you as long as he's sentenced, okay? So that's why we need receipts. We can attach them. If you can't get a receipt, don't worry about it too much, but if you have them, we like to get them. I mean, you're also going to have to fill out the impact statement. And basically, this is something the judge is going to read prior to sentencing. Let's him know how the crimes affected you emotionally, mentally, financially. Um, put what you want in here. He's going to read this prior to sentencing, and that's going to help him kind of decide what the sentence is going to be. It, would, it just lets the judge know. It has different things about your safety, anxiety, um, any financial hardships. Um, so basically, when the judge is reading this, it's just going to let him know how it's affected you. So, you know, if you're having trouble sleeping or you're anxious to leave your house, anything like that, if it's on here, the judge is going to know that because of what this person did, that you're having these feelings and, and it's affecting you in different parts of your life. So it's, it's really a good idea to do this, um, just because, especially if you don't want to go to the sentencing, because then the judge will, be, will know exactly how it's affected you um, and once you get this if you have any trouble filling it out you are more than welcome to call me you can come in I can help you get it filled out so it's filled out appropriately once I get it I put it into my computer system the DA's have access to it the judges will eventually have access to it probation has access to it so everybody who needs to see it is going to see it but it's going to be all confidential as well it's not going to be out if, if he's found guilty and there's a sentencing and he's ordered to pay you the restitution, the payments actually go through adult probation collections. So they will um, set up the payment plans with the defendant. They will collect the money from him and then they are the ones who will actually send you the check. So there'll be no direct contact. Um, you need to know too that, you know, if the judge orders say $500, you may only be getting about 25 bucks at a time. It, you know, they don't normally pay it all up front but they'll set up a payment plan so you can start getting those checks in. Um, and then if there's any issues with that, I can give you a contact person in that department as well. Generally speaking, when you're here, you're gonna be meeting with me. Now, I realize that I had you talk to a couple other people who work here, um, but they're dealing with certain aspects of it. Um, their job is to really specialize in some of those things, and that's not my job. My job is to help you with this process emotionally, to talk to you about your feelings. Um, whatever it is that you feel is important, if that is that you um, need to know what your options are, I'm gonna help you out with that. If you're experiencing a lot of sadness or um, difficulty sleeping, nightmares, um, if there's something from your past that happened that doesn't have anything to do with this but that is still impacting you and how you're feeling about this, it's okay to talk about that. You don't ever have to talk to the police. It doesn't even have to be things that happen in this country. If there's other things that you need to be able to talk about, I am happy to talk about those things as well. Um, again, these are your goals, not mine. So you let me know how, we can, how I can best help you. Um, because we are going to be going to court, I kind of want to explain to you what a preliminary hearing is because a preliminary hearing is going to be the first time you're going to need to be in court. Um, a preliminary hearing is kind of our first step in Pennsylvania and what that is is a chance for a judge to hear some of the evidence, not all of it, but some of it, and decide, okay, is this person that the police arrested, Reason, is it reasonable to assume that this person that the police arrested might have done these certain charges? Okay, so there's going to be some evidence pr presented. Much of that is your testimony, so you're going to sit up there and promise to tell the truth. You can have your interpreter there, obviously, um, and you'll just say, this is what happened. It's just a statement, essentially like you told the police already this is what happened. Some people will be asking you questions, you just answer truthfully. I'll be there in the courtroom with you um, so that you can have a friendly face and a person to look at if you, if you feel you need to. The defendant, the guy who broke in, he's also going to be there. But understand, he's not allowed to approach you. He can't come up to you. He's not going to threaten you in any way. In fact, his attorney will tell him to be on his very best behavior. Um, he's going to be acting as though he is a, a really wonderful guy who couldn't possibly have done these things. That's okay. Um, the judge is just trying to look at what evidence might be there to, again, reasonably suspect that this person might have done it. In terms of if he really did do it or not, that's something they're going to determine at a trial. We'll get to that. When you go to the courthouse, um, I'll meet you there. So what's going to happen is you walk up the steps. Um, you can, there's kind of like a, a walkway. You just kind of go up. Then there's some doors. 
right inside the doors are metal detectors. Now you probably have been through something like this at the airport. Uh, as soon as you go in those metal detectors, you're gonna see me. I'm gonna be right on the other side and waiting for you. So you'll come in, put your stuff down, you'll see me there, I'll probably wave, and, um, and then we'll go to the courtroom together. Do you have any questions about our agency? Can I answer anything for you? Other Koki, Prashna Rusha, Amru Sanstago Barina, Vani, Motis Kobe Uta Binusa Tanzu. No, I'm sure I don't have any questions. Okay, great. Is there anything I can do that's going to make this more comfortable for you? Okay. So if you think about something later, let me know. You can ask it or tell me or whatever you need to. Um, but in the meantime, I think we've we've kind of gone through enough for today. So why don't we schedule for the next time? We'll choose a time for you to come in again. Um, like I said, our services are free, so all I need from you is a, a time that we agree to, to meet again. Okay? Thank you so much for coming in today. I'm really glad to have met you.